So cut off plus one opens, cut off calls, hero raises three bets with ace king, original opener four bets in this squeeze situation. So the lesson here, number one is in a squeeze situation, the perceived range for the hero is going to be a lot wider because this is, this is a squeeze. So in the four bet, the range is wide as well. Stan, you already ruled for it. And are you intending to take coaching to work on the aspect of your game? Um, I actually already am working with a coach, uh, which I have been, I guess, since like December. Um, so, you know, hopefully that helps me like, kick my game up a notch. Like I said, just shoving in the ace king here. Um, if he folds, I'm actually going to be super happy because that's just going to be like $34 plus whatever I had of dead money. Ace King versus Ace King, I'm actually not free rolling him, but I do have him covered on the hearts. He's free rolling me right now. No dice. Chop it up. Oh, uh, let's click refresh on oh, that profit button. I have to do that manually. I don't have so on the button, he raises to $2. There's a re-raise. Two and a half or three and a half times. Big blind raises to 650. So the big blind putting another 550. And basically the comment is that he's never gonna fold for anything like $3, but this is a size at which he would start folding. So I think he would fold here folding uh for like three and a half four and four and a half dollars is when i start mm -hmm. folding stuff and king nine just like isn't going to play well at all uh, my game do i need to improve so here with queen nine on the button spades suited i'm sure he's gonna raise it betting and four betting plays because uh, as i've heard you know 200 the cutoff is doesn't come more in. aggressive than 100 oh the cutoff comes in um, call in position or re-raise here against George and Dino. Um, I think I'm going to throw in the re-raise. He's never actually 4-bet before, so when somebody's never 4-bet before, it just really makes me want to 3-bet, like, every hand against them, because, like, I'm going to be in position. If he's not going to 4-bet me, then no money, no extra money is going to be going in pre-flop after the 3-bet a majority of the time. And come on! Come on, why did I just have to make that entire speech about how he's never 4-bet before, and then he throws in the 4-bet? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, okay, nice oh, answer. Oh, oh. Nice answer. Ace-deuce is gonna be a raise. As long as Dean lets folds here, I'm not gonna be throwing in a 3-bet bluff case. And one, because I don't think the Ace-deuce is a good hand to 3-bet, and two, because um, he actually 4-bets a quite a bit from the cutoff. Oh, and that's probably the position he gets, like, Four bet bluffs most from uh, based on what I've seen. It's just like timing out, disconnecting on all the tables. All right, dude. Um, okay, seems to have gone away at least. Okay, seven now. six raised to three dollars suited from the cutoff. And I still expect to be winning in the games. Um, six deuce just gonna be fold. See a free flop here with the six five. Um, not really gonna bluff a six high though. Okay, guys, do the ace dance. It's no music, but we do the ace stance anyways, because I've got aces on the top right table. Turn the open ender here. I am going to start bluffing. Uh, pair on the river. I mean, this really isn't a good card to bluff. Click that chat button. And wasn't getting ace 8 to fold with the bluff anyways. Turn the open ender here. I am going to start bluffing. Um, if I do get 4-bet, I'm just going to jam all the money in. <laughs> Chris DeBorg, welcome. Yes, confirmed and not a square. A 
Alright, so, see a flop here. Uh, I'm not really too afraid of flush draws because I am the one who holds the ace here with the spade. Uh, I'm gonna start off by betting here. Uh, I like to stick close to half pot. I'm just gonna bet half dollars. I actually expect quite a few calls on this board. When I don't get called, uh, I basically just, you know, expecting he had a hand up. Sixes and it's just folding. Uh, the flat thickens, the floor gets more and more dangerous. I am gonna keep betting here. Uh, if he raises, if he raises his turn, it's actually gonna be a little bit of a six spot, but I think I'll probably end up calling. Wow, that river. Um, wow. Okay, so, probably one of the worst rivers in the deck. Um, is there value, like if I shove here, am I really getting called by worse than a king? I don't think so. So, my play is going to be check. Now the second thing you got to figure out is, you know, is it going to be a check call or a check fold? Um, how many draws are out there? Like, even if he has a draw, he probably has a little bit of showdown value with the 10. Like, say he had like jack 10 or something, so I think that increases the chances that he's actually going to check back and miss a draw. Um, same thing with ace-10. Um, oh, I'm so happy that he checked back. Take it down. And he ended up having the almighty queen-9 pair plus flush draw on the turn. I'm gonna keep on betting uh, with my king-queen for value here. So in that last hand, the lesson is if they even, even if they have a f draw, they probably still have a pair to go with it. So they still have showdown value. So they're likely to check it on a missed draw rather than turn their hand into a bluff, which they could do also. Uh, let's see what Dust Angel does. Does decide to fold. So he opens with King Queen, three dollars. Wow, that river. Um, wow. Mm -hmm. So, my play is going to be check. Now, the second thing you got to think Um, how many draws are out there? Like, even if he has a draw, he probably has a little bit of showdown value with the 10. Like, say he had, like, jack 10 or something, so I think that increases the chances that he's actually going to check back and miss a draw. Um, same thing with ace 10. Um, so happy that he checked back, take it down, and he ended up having the almighty queen nine pair plus flush draw on the turn. I'm gonna keep on betting uh, with my king queen for value here, though I don't. Uh, I will definitely say that the eight of hearts is not a good card. Uh, let's see what Dust Angel does. Does decide to fold. <laughs> What is not to love about this hand is what I love about poker. You know, got a good hand. People are playing. Well, we'll see what George does over here. Um, if he raises, I think I'm just going to throw in the three bet. All right, so it looks like just uh, going to be heads up between me and Fiat over here. Going to throw in the raise. He throws in the limp re raise. Um, right now I'm trying to figure out what the bottom of my shoving range is, because I'd definitely be shoving 10s, and I think I'd be shoving 9s, I think I'd probably just have to shove 8s on him as well. Um, has he ever done this before? But I mean, when he's limping, he's just going to be so loose. Um, I think this is probably the bottom of my shoving range, but I'm going to do it. Um, of course I wouldn't be making that play if he had more than like $40. Uh, when he only has that little, uh, I don't really want to be just like check calling or like check folding flops. So GG, 40 bucks, um, ran into the pocket kings. There might have been a slightly losing play, but I don't think it was very bad at all. Uh, I'm just happy, you know, he had kings. And see if we can get some money back with the ace eight. Uh, it's definitely good enough to throw in a three bet here. Uh, first thing we're going to look at is how often this guy 4-bets, and I only have a sample of 6 4-bets on him, so I'm not, I'm just going to ignore that stat, um, completely. Uh, when gotten at the 
makes it eight dollars here. I'm not holding a single pair. Uh, but still no sets. Have I ever hit a set today? I don't recall any. Yeah, let's raise it up against Ross. Alright, so he throws in the four bed. So... Like, th this got slightly more significant. I mean, his four bed is gonna be two out of... Um, two out of, what do you call it? Uh, seven. So it's a pretty significant percentage over a small sample. Um, if I am going to be 5 up bluffing, I think this is a hand I like to go with, because uh, it does have the ace blocker, just means I'm going to get called a lot less often. Uh, yeah, you know what? Ship it. <laughs> Let's do it. Hope we don't run into a monster. And take it down. That is why you 5 up bluff occasionally. You don't want to do that all the time, because that's going to be really bad if you do it all the time. But there we go. my gut shot, I am going to be continuing here, and with the fives, um, I mean, it sucks when he makes it $4 pre, but you really can't be folding here, um, especially with the weaker player in the pot. Uh, yeah, just going to go for seven. Oh, sixes and fours, so close to fives. And I am going to be jamming with this uh, queen eight, uh, basically because there's a lot of draws that missed here, and basically has no showdown value. Uh, it sucks that I block the draws. Um, I mean, the eight blocks flush draws, I don't think that's that significant. Um, not really happy about it, but I'm shipping it. And it is a little bit of an overbed, which I'm completely fine with. Um, that just gives me a little extra fold equity, makes him think about, you know, snap calling with a nine. Um, if I had bet like $15 here, I think he snap called. Okay, he thought about it and called with a 9, so GG over bet. Um, with my open ender plus pair here, I am going to be betting. Um, question is how much? I think 14 is probably good. Uh, Derek, uh, this HUD is made by... So that pocket 5 hand was really good because the card signaled to continue betting. And on that turn, when he bet, he had a lot of equity and he had chances to improve. He had a lot of outs. So that really worked out well. He was comfortable go ahead and making the bet because he had so much out, so many outs, so much equity. In that case, he did not mind turning the fives into a bluff because not only did his bluff have showdown value, his bluffs also had chances to improve as a sunlight bluff.